Welcome wrestling fans, welcome to Curtain Jerk, and as always, I'm your host, Jacob Grindy, reporting for the Main Event Marks YouTube channel. You can also check me out on Spotify, however you're listening to my voice, I appreciate it. And we talked about NXT Battleground on Monday, we talked about New Japan Dominion on Tuesday, it's Wednesday afternoon, and what are we going to talk about, Dynamite? No! We're going to be talking about WWE Clash of the Castle predictions. But before we get into that, I want to go over some news that's kind of related to the sports entertainment world, if you will. We talked about Sexy Red last podcast uh, taking part in an assault that happened in a New Jersey airport on her way to the NXT show. And here we are going to talk about another legend of the internet, another cultural icon that I do think kind of leans into how people feel about uh, pro wrestlers and things like that. I mean, he does win a championship belt every 4th of July. We're talking about Joey Chestnut, 16-time champion, not going to be able to compete in the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. He signed a contract with a vegan hot dog company, so, you know, controversial there, you know, once... uh, proud fan of beef and pork putting down those dogs guzzling wieners for all of america to cheer for 75 at a time numbers that you know angela white would be shocked to hear about numbers that you know um let's hit him with another one lisa ann couldn't do joey chestnut is putting down on live television every fourth of july wiener glizzy king um But he's not going to be a part of the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest anymore because he signed that contract. So they're not going to let him compete the 16-time champion, which I think is interesting. Because, you know, Ric Flair, of course, 16-time champion and hopefully retired after, you know, having a heart attack in the ring during his last match two years ago, SummerSlam weekend. John Cena kind of moving down the card rapidly as he ages and goes into Hollywood. He's at 16 titles, and now Joey Chestnut looking to retire at 16. Will there ever be someone who crosses that 16 plane? I mean, I don't sure where Roman Reigns is at. I know Randy Orton is at like 12. I know Triple H had to retire at 14. He was getting close. Uh, But will there ever be someone of that stature? I don't ever think there will be. And it's very interesting to see the last few years we thought John Cena, or I thought John Cena was going to do it. And I damn sure thought Joey Chestnut was going to do it this year, but it's anyone's field. Eater X is retired. That was my favorite. Kobayashi, of course, about 10 years ago, got banned from the uh, the contest as well. The guy who rapped with his daughter, who drinks all the lemonade, he's gone. Who is going to be the Nathan Hot Dog Eating Champion in 2024? Kurt Jerkin is going to follow this. They win a title. They win a title belt. That's all the link I need to watch the sports entertainment cultural phenomenon that is the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. And uh, no Joey Chestnut. This is, I think, in a year that Okada left New Japan, this might be an even bigger deal for this contest. I would say that this is their Okada, but this is, I mean, and... Is this a bigger deal than Vince McMahon leaving WWE? I don't know. That's something that goes into my head when I think about this. And um, it's interesting to see who's going to guzzle these dogs. And is this new champion going to beat the 75 dog record that he sets? I don't know. Does he have to? Would you Would you work that hard if you knew you could get 50 and still win the title and make a name for yourself? I don't know. It's an interesting situation that we're all going to be paying attention to on the 4th of July here in America. But something that we're going to be paying attention to that kind of has global ramifications is WWE announcing that they're going to have a partnership with NOAA. And there's going to be some sort of big announcement on Sunday. So a few years ago, Kenta appeared in NOAA. Uh, during a, during his stint when he was in 205 Live, Nakamura appeared in Noah last year wrestling the Great Muto. Jake Lee from Noah recently wrestled in New Japan, so Noah has no you know qualms being friendly with other companies and things like that. And you know 
this is pretty interesting. This is also interesting because despite Noah being like a distant number two to New Japan as far as popularity in wrestling, they are owned by a much larger conglomerate uh, cyber fight or cyber agent. Um, and under that same umbrella is the number three promotion in Japan, DDT, where Omega and Kota Bushi and Takeshita all came out of that seemed to kind of have a relationship with AEW because of that. Chris Jericho recently wrestled over there last year. They also have the number two women's promotion, Tokyo Joshi Pro, under that umbrella, and have recently been showcasing Marigold events, which is uh, Rossi Ogawa's promotion, that, and Rossi Ogawa is the guy who left stardom. So it all seems to be like this collective thing that's kind of, you know, kind of ha happening over Japan. Uh, kind of maybe eclipsing New Japan. I feel like if WWE starts working with Noah, I do feel like that would be the first signs of something kind of eclipsing New Japan for the first time in like 20 years. Super, super interesting shit here. I wonder what it's going to be on Sunday. I'm probably going to talk about whatever the announcement is in my class of the castle Clash of the Castle review. And speaking of Clash of the Castle, we have our predictions here Five big matches. I love this layout of the PLEs. Five matches, six matches maybe. Just quick banger matches. All stand out. All have something awesome to showcase. And we're going to run down the card here. We have the triple threat tag team match for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. The champions Bianca Belair and Jade versus Elba Fire and Isla Dawn who are European, or I think they're from the UK, so that's kind of cool to see them on this card. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. So um, I guess, yeah, it's not on the pre-show, which is good. And, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, like the, I mean, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Starks, they're not giving them the titles. And I haven't seen Elba Fire and Isla Dawn on the show in, in like at least eight months. So the only reason they're on the show because they're, you know, getting that hometown love and, you know, this is ridiculous. Jade and Bianca are going to win handedly here. This is going to be like a Goldberg run for them with these titles this year. Um, this is great here. So not only do you cover up Jade's greenness in a tag team, you cover up her greenness by having another whole other tag team a part of this match in a triple threat tag team match. But you also give her that big entrance in the stadium. You let her flex on everybody. You have the spotlight hitting those muscles just right. You have the spotlight hitting that backside just right. And she will be a star. I'm telling you that much. She's already kind of a star. Uh, the controversy uh, you know, surrounds her with her inability to wrestle as well as people would like her to. But I don't think it matters. I mean, shit. She even said it when she came out in France, like, y'all don't like me, but listen to them. So they liked her in France, and that was a hardcore crowd. That was a hardcore crowd that might have given Jade a bigger reaction than Damian Priest, and we'll get to him a little later, but he's the, you know, the, the world champion on the Raw brand. So, I mean, like it or not, Jade is a big star, and now that she's outside of the that, that AEW, you know, we all care about work rate bubble. Um, she's an even bigger star. Moving on, Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles, an I quit match for the undisputed WWE Ch Tag Team Championship. Um, AJ is quitting. AJ is quitting here. They're not going to put the title on AJ Styles. Um, I feel like this whole year is just a placeholder, or at least till SummerSlam, to get to Roman, to get to The Rock, to, to kind of continue that story and how hot they were going into Mania this year. They just need to recuperate that. So AJ Styles, Gunther, and then like we saw in Saudi Arabia, Logan Paul, they're all just going to be uh, good matches that kind of uh, tell good stories, but in the back of your mind, you know Cody Rhodes is keeping that title. So Cody Rhodes is making AJ Styles quit um, somehow, or maybe they'll do uh, the Rock Mankind WrestleMania or uh, Royal Rumble '99 thing, where it was played over the intercom that Mankind quit, but he didn't actually quit; he was knocked out. Um, one of my favorite I Quit matches of all time, WrestleMania '99, The Rock and Mankind. It was also featured in Beyond the Mat. Another match happening here: the WWE. Intercontinental Championship match. Um, Sami Zayn, the champion, versus Chad Gable, 
who's going to have Otis, Tazawa, Maxine Dupree all in his corner. Um, this is awesome here. I mean, this is a, this was a great match. Earlier this year, they had a great match. They've been telling the story since before WrestleMania with these two. Chad Gable, I think his contract is up soon. But even if it wasn't up, I think Sami Zayn's going to win this one. There's going to be something that happens here where he gets his comeuppance. Otis, Tazawa, Maxine Dupree, they're going to turn on him. He's an asshole, and he's been an asshole to them for a while. So I can see them uh, not wanting to help him as much as he would think they would help him. He's going to think he has a plan. That plan's going to backfire because he's a fucking dick. Going on to the next match here we have a WWE women's championship match bailey versus another uh european another uk homer piper niven with chelsea green chelsea green here i think is uh i would say the star with the most upside in this whole match so i think she's going to be centered around something's going to happen here where she fucks it up for piper niven and bailey is going to win and continue this kind of uh i would say lame duck championship run she had a great story going into mania and i think the story was her winning the title now that she has the title i think they don't really know what to do with her and they're doing a poor job unlike cody where i think they're doing a great job where they really don't know what to do where bailey i don't think they know what to do and they're kind of uh, not really hiding it as well piper niven she does have some size to her you know that uk crowd loves bailey here so this is honestly now that i'm thinking about it this might be a split crowd even with that homer who knows but then we're going into the match that everyone wants to talk about the world heavyweight championship match damian priest the champion versus the hometown hero drew mcintyre he held the title during the pandemic he lost it as they were leaving the pandemic going into wrestlemania 37 with bobby lashley he lost the title and he's been trying to get it back trying to get it back trying to get it back for years and now here he is in his hometown our home country and uh, I thought, okay, so, you know, the theory was online that CM Punk might cost him this victory here. And I was thinking, like, hey, that might that might be um, interesting because Drew McIntyre is going to wrestle Sheamus on SmackDown. And then I was like, okay, well, let me look into this, see if this is really happening. But it's a dark match. So I think that if they were going to put over uh, Drew on SmackDown heavily, that would be the hometown love. And then on the, the you know, the Scottish psychopath would lose to Damian Priest. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't really see that going down that way anymore. I think that Drew McIntyre will win the championship in Scotland. Um, just like Rhea Ripley won her big match, uh, in her home country earlier this year i think they're just kind of just using that formula and going around the world i mean shit i mean they went to puerto rico that crowd was so hot they gave fucking carlito cool a job back and they gave selena vega you know a pretty good boost as well and now damian priest is walking around with that damn title so you never know what's going to happen when you give that hometown hero the love that they deserve they haven't done it a long time this is a staple of the helmsley era the new Helmsley era, the Paul Levesque era, where the hometown guy gets the showcase. Almost so everyone in the arena already knows what's going to happen. And I think it's going to happen here. I think Drew McIntyre is going to win the world championship. So what did we have? Bianca and Jay. We had Sammy. So yeah, no titles are going to change hands. It's going to be a great event. It's going to be a spectacle. The UK crowd is always hot. We know this. Just like the French crowd, just like the Puerto Rican crowd. They're always hot, and they're going to be hot for this one, especially if Drew is lifting that title up. I do think there's going to be something that happens. Maybe Punk attacks him after it. Maybe ruins his celebration. Wins the title, ruins the celebration. So then we have Punk versus Drew for that championship. I don't think the feud needs that championship. If you really wanted to get heat on Punk, you would have him cost him the title. And then you'd have uh, Judgment Day. Priest carry the world championship for a little longer. But... Like we said, Bailey's going to have the title. Jade and Bianca are going to have the title for a long time. Cody's going to have the title for a long time. So you need something to happen here on this show. And I think the big title change might have to be Drew. And then afterwards, we're reminded that CM Punk and Drew hate each other. That's what I think. I don't know. We'll have to see. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, hit me up at JG Pro Wrestling on Twitter or uh, find me on Instagram. 
do what you need to do, fly high, I'm out.